The Disappearance of Chiron Harmon Chiron Richard Harmon was born September 9, 2002, in Portland, Oregon, to Desire A. Young and Kane Harmon, an engineer for Intel. The couple divorced eight months into Young's pregnancy with Chiron, with Young citing irreconcilable differences. The two had been granted shared custody of Chiron until 2004, but when Young was diagnosed with kidney failure that required extensive medical intervention, Kane took over full custody. Notwithstanding this fact, Young still remained an active part of the child's upbringing. In 2007, Kane married Terry Moulton, born March 14, 1970. A substitute teacher, originally from Roseburg, Kane became romantically involved with Moulton around 2001, when he and Young were in the midst of divorcing. They married in 2007 while visiting Kauai, Hawaii. In December 2008, Moulton gave birth to a daughter, Kiara. Meanwhile, Chiron was a student at Skyline Elementary School near Forest Park. On June 4, 2010, Chiron was taken to Skyline Elementary School by his stepmother Terry Harmon Moulton, who then stayed with him while he attended a science fair. Terry Harmon stated that she left the school at around 8.45 a.m. and that she last remembered seeing Chiron walking down the hall to his class. However, Chiron was never seen in his first class and was instead marked as absent that day. Terry's statements to the police indicate that, after leaving the school at 8.45 a.m., she ran errands at two different Fred Meyer grocery stores until about 10.10 in the morning. Between then and 11.39 in the morning, she stated that she was driving her daughter around town in an attempt to use the motion of the vehicle to soothe the toddler's earache. Terry said that she then went to a local gym, uh, exercised until about 12.40 p.m. By 1.21 p.m., she had arrived home and posted photos of Chiron at the science fair on Facebook. At 3.30 p.m., Terry and her husband, Kane, walked with their daughter, Kiara, to the bus stop to meet Chiron. The bus driver told them that the boy had not boarded the bus and to call the school to ask his whereabouts. Terry did so, only to be informed by the school secretary that, as far as anyone there knew, Chiron had not been at school since early that day, and that he had accordingly been marked absent. Realizing then that the boy was missing, the secretary called 911, and so the largest missing persons search in Oregon history has begun. At the heart of the search for Chiron Harmon is the relationship between his parents and stepmother. His biological parents, Kane Harmon and Desi Re Young, divorced when the boy was small, and the two shared custody until Desi Re became severely ill with kidney problems. She was forced to move back in with her parents and give full time custody of Harmon to Kane until she fully recovered. Kane then married Terry Moulton, with whom he had a daughter. Kiara, but things were apparently not going well in the marriage, according to the emails that Moulton sent to her friends. After police showed her these messages, Young said the emails revealed that Moulton had a severe hatred for Chiron. She blames a lot of the marital problems between Kane and herself on Chiron. It was a huge point of contention in their marriage, and she had expressed in great detail her hatred for Chiron, Young said. I now believe, without a shadow of a doubt, that not only is she capable of hurting Chiron, but it's clear that she could have hurt him in the worst possible way. In late June 2010, in the midst of the search, Kane was reportedly told by investigators that Terry had offered their landscaper, Rodolfo Sanchez, a lot of money to kill her husband. Sanchez testified in a deposition that Terry approached him to help kill her husband in January 2010, five months before Chiron's disappearance. In her own deposition, Terry denied the charge. Investigators convinced Sanchez to confront Terry while wearing an audio surveillance device, but they were unable to obtain any evidence and could not make an arrest. On June 28, Kane filed for a divorce and obtained a restraining order against Terry. The divorce was granted and Terry was eventually granted supervised visitation with her daughter. During this time, 
Terry failed to separate polygraph examinations regarding Chiron's disappearance. In August 2010, it was announced that law enforcement were searching for an individual allegedly seen by two witnesses sitting inside Terry's truck outside Skyline Elementary the day of the disappearance. Bruce McCain, a former sheriff for the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, said, The identity of that second person, if he or she existed, could be critical in determining what happened to Chiron after 9 a.m. On June 4, meanwhile, in July 2010, a Multnomah County Grand Jury subpoenaed several friends of Terry, including Deed Spitcher, whom Young and Kane described as having been in close communication with Terry and providing Terry with support and advice that is not in the best interests of our son. According to law enforcement, Spitcher was extremely cooperative and allowed a search of her property and car, as well as enduring three hours of questioning from detectives. Dot, dot. On the day of Curran's disappearance, Spitcher abruptly left her work gardening for a homeowner on Germantown Road in northwest Portland around 11.30 a.m. and returned around 90 minutes later. She also helped Terry purchase an untraceable cell phone. Dot, dot. During this time, Spitcher told journalists, There's this horror that my friend is going through. If I thought for a second that she was capable of foul play, I would not have been there. She would not have been my friend in the first place. In early August 2010, Young, Kane and the Skyline Elementary School principal were subpoenaed and testified during the grand jury hearing dot dot in December 2010. It was reported by the Oregonian that the grand jury had yet to provide compelling evidence yielding a potential indictment. By November 29, 2010, search efforts in Chiron's case had cost an estimated $1.4 million, according to county commissioners, and yielded 4,257 tips. Dot dot in May 2017. It was reported by Portland Station KGW that a secret grand jury panel continued to hear evidence in Chiron's disappearance and had convened on multiple occasions. During the report, Chiron's case was described as still active and ongoing. Two months later, in July 2017, law enforcement conducted further searches along Skyline Boulevard, but the searches yielded no results. In June 2018, Young posted on the official Find Kyron Harmon Facebook page, Stay tuned, something big is coming, I promise you. On June 1, 2012, Young filed a civil lawsuit against Terry, claiming that she was responsible for the disappearance of Kyron. The lawsuit attempted to prove that Terry had kidnapped Kyron on the day he disappeared. Young sought $10 million in damages. On August 15, 2012, a federal court judge denied a motion by Terry to delay the lawsuit. In early October 2012, Spitcher refused to answer any of the 142 questions posed to her during a deposition regarding Young's lawsuit. Among these questions were several regarding her whereabouts on June 4, 2010, and her contact with Terry that day. She also declined to identify a photo of Chiron, whether she had met him and whether she knew his father, Kane. During testimony provided by Kane in a separate hearing the same year, he stated that police had told him they have more probable cause to think Terry Harmon was involved in Chiron's disappearance than they did two years ago. On July 30, 2013, it was announced that Young had dropped the lawsuit against Terry so as not to interfere with the ongoing police investigation. In an interview with ABC, Terry Harmon's estranged husband Kane has suggested this stepmother of missing seven-year-old Kyron Harmon may have suffered from some form of postpartum depression. Kane called Terry Harmon's emotional states more erratic, ill at giving birth to their daughter 19 months ago, dot dot on Good Morning America Saturday. A psychiatrist talked about the differences between postpartum depression and postpartum psychosis. Psychiatrist and author Luan Brizendini told GMA that postpartum depression comes with crying, irritability, and fatigue and difficulty taking care of the baby or on themselves because they're so sad. She said postpartum psychosis, on the other hand, is where the mother actually loses touch with reality 
Brizendini told GMA, this type of psychosis is marked by bizarre thinking, strange ideas, and the complete personality change. Investigators have not named Terry Harmon as a suspect or charged her with any crime. Kane Harmon filed for divorce June 28, citing his suspicions that Terry Harmon is involved in his son's disappearance, which he says were backed up by information from the police department. The affidavit, which was released to the public, states, I believe respondent Terry is involved in the disappearance of my son Chiron, who has been missing since June 4, 2010. I also recently learned that respondents attempted to hire someone to murder me. The police have provided me with probable cause to believe the above two statements to be true. Along with the divorce filing, Kane Harmon also requested a restraining order against Terry Harmon, which included a provision that she not have access to firearms or ammunition. On July 8th, Kane Harmon filed an amendment to the restraining order asking that Terry Harmon be legally ordered to move out of their home. Kane Harmon stated during press conference that part of his motivation for the amendment is tied to his hope that Chiron will be found alive. He told reporters that when Chiron is found, he wants to be able to bring the boy back to the home he knows, rather than the undisclosed location where Kane Harmon and his 19-month-old daughter are living now. Chiron's birth mother, Desiree Young, told reporters that she suspected Terry Harmon from the moment she got the phone call forming her of Chiron's disappearance. She said that hearing that Terry Harmon later took and failed to polygraph tests only confirmed her suspicions. I've known her a long time. I know she's lying, Young said. It is really frustrating that she is not cooperating. Everyone knows that Terry took to polygraph tests, Kane Harmon said Thursday. She did not pass those tests. Dot dot Chiron single quotes as distraught parents pleaded with Terry Harmon to tell the police what she knows. Chiron Harmon's mother reiterated her belief Friday that the stepmother of her missing son was responsible for his disappearance and warned the woman she will face consequences. This is not going to get any easier for you, Desiree Young said at a news conference in a statement aimed at Terry Harmon. Dot dot dot, the police will not stop until they find Chiron you will go to jail. And whoever has been helping you will either have to talk or they will go to jail, Young said. Young was joined by her ex-husband, Kane Harmon, the father of the missing boy. They did not provide any evidence to explain the allegations. Dot, 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 Terry Harmon has not been arrested or charged in the disappearance, and authorities have said she is not a suspect. However, Investigators have distributed flyers asking the public for any information about her whereabouts on the morning of June 4th, the day she took Chiron to school, and he vanished dot 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 in addition. Her divorce attorney Peter Bunch acknowledged in court papers filed for Harmon this week that she is a de facto suspect at the centre of a police investigation. Chiron Richard Harmon, born September 9, 2002, an American boy, who disappeared from Skyline Elementary School in Portland, Oregon, on June 4, 2010, after attending a science fair during testimony provided by Kane in a separate hearing the same year. He stated that police had told him they have more probable cause to think Terry Harmon was involved in Chiron's disappearance than they did two years ago. 32. On July 30, 2013, it was announced that Young had dropped the lawsuit against Terry so as not to interfere with the ongoing police investigation. Harmon's disappearance sparked the largest criminal investigation in Oregon history. To this day, his whereabouts remain unknown.